Hi, my name is Dan Coffin, certified professional agronomist and owner of Garden Vigor. And we're in the garden today, in the tomato patch, looking over a specific problem that's bothering us really badly this year. It's called blight. Now there's been some confusion about, about which blight we have. Right now, in this area, where it's been fairly hot and dry with high humidity, we've got bacterial blight, which are very obvious yellow bright spots on these leaves that start way down at the bottom and move up through the canopy. It's spread by moisture and occasional rain and high humidity and the high heat, and temp uh, high heat temperatures that we're getting is moving that up through the canopy. It's killing it slowly but surely. So that's bacterial blight. Late blight, which has been talked about quite a bit, is a Phytophthora infestans. That's a big word for basically a water mold that's been killing plants in the areas that are receiving more moisture just south of this area. So heavy wet conditions in the soil are creating uh, the, the water mold problem that they're having with late blight. Late blight is entirely different than bacterial blight. Late blight will start as a water soaking on the leaves. The leaves will turn uh, a grayish color, die rather rapidly, appear like they've gotten a frost. And then the fruit will start getting great big gray lesions or uh, wet spots looking on, on the plant. And shortly after that, the fruit will rot, smell terrible, very foul smelling, fall off. And of course, the plant is dead by then anyway. Whereas bacterial blight basically will spot up your uh, tomatoes a little bit. Basically, bacterial blight is going to leave you with a lot less foliage, a lot less coverage. And obviously, you see the tomatoes hanging on the plant uncovered. They are not going to mature very well at all. Very little opportunity to make sugar. How can you control it? Well, bacterial blight early in the season, if you get in there very early and get mulch on the surface so that the splash from rain can't come up on the plants, that will help dramatically. The, uh, the addition of, of calcium in the soil system, and if you don't know the pH of your soil, probably calcium sulfate or sulfacal is a, is a pretty good idea. That's gypsum or wallboard. Put that in there to help keep good wetting and drying in that soil system and good water movement. You can foliar your feed with micronutrients to help the system make more sugars and stronger cells. We have a product uh, at, at uh, Garden Vigor called MaxGrow, which has very, very high sugars and will help keep the plant a little bit cleaner and healthier throughout the system. Another product called Emerald Mist will give you micronutrients and some phosphites, which help control some of these organisms, especially late blight. So there's a whole host of things that you can do uh, naturally as, as well as, as uh, somewhat chemically. If you're into the uh, fungicide applications, then things like Bravo and fungicides like that will help keep the, the uh, plant protected. So that's a lot about tomatoes in a short bit, but we wanted to let you know about blight because it is spreading rather rapidly in the area. If you have questions about growing tomatoes and late blight and, and septoria blight and the difference, you call us or get, look us up on the web at www.gardenvigor.com.